Welcome to the Hilleberg Anyan and Anyan GT. Both are roomy, lightweight, all-around three-season tents. The Anyan has a single standard size vestibule, while the Anyan GT has a single extended one. Both the Anyan and Anyan GT are available in two and three person versions. Like all Hilleberg tents, both have linked but separable inner and outer tents for simultaneous pitching. Their Carillon 1000 outer tent fabric and 9mm poles make them remarkably strong and lightweight. Both the Anyan and Anyan GT have plenty of ventilation built into their designs. A gap between the outer tent and the ground allows constant airflow, and their inner tents are made from a highly breathable and water-repellent fabric. In addition, the inner tent's entrances are all mesh, and there's a large triangular mesh vent in the back wall of the inner tent. In good weather, you can roll up the entire back wall of the outer tent, exposing the vent on the inner tent to full airflow. Included with the Anyan is the tent, a tent bag, two poles, one spare pole section with a repair sleeve, a pole bag, and 12 pegs in a peg bag. Included with the Anyan GT is the tent, a tent bag, three poles, one spare pole section with a repair sleeve, a pole bag, and 16 pegs in a peg bag. Both tents also come with attached guidelines with line runners. Other accessories available for purchase include pole holders for pitching the inner tent separately, a footprint for the inner tent area, a mesh inner tent, extra pegs, and guidelines. Pitching the Anyan and Anyan GT. The setup for both models is the same, except that the Anyan has two poles and the GT has three. Find a level spot that is free of stones and other sharp objects. Especially in windy conditions, it's a good idea to attach one guy line to a pack or other heavy object to prevent the tent from blowing away. Lay out the tent and set the adjustable peg attachment points to their longest settings. Lay out the tent's poles, noting that the poles are not all the same length. In the Anyan, there is one longer and one shorter pole, and in the Anyan GT, there is one longer and two shorter poles. In both models, the longer poles are marked with red tape, which corresponds to the pole sleeves marked in red on the tents. For maximum longevity and durability of your tent poles, it's important that you're careful with them. Make sure that each segment is seated properly and that they don't drift apart while pitching the tent. A small gap can lead to pole breakage. Insert one pole approximately halfway into one of the pole sleeves. Grip the pole and pull the pole sleeve until the pole end is properly seated. Put the other end into the pole holder cup and tighten the pole tensioner. Make sure the tensioner is tightened completely. Repeat the process with the other poles, making sure to put the pole marked with red into the pole sleeve that has red webbing at the opening. The tent's simple, single opening, continuous pole sleeve and tensioner system is quick to pitch and is remarkably stable. Peg the adjustable peg loops at the back two corners of the tent. Press the pegs down into the ground at a 45 degree angle until only the top of the peg remains barely visible. Use a rock to press or pound the pegs in if necessary. Pull the front of the tent out, making sure the tent is straight. We recommend that you aim the front rather than the back end of your tent into the wind. Doing so prevents the back wall of the outer tent from being pushed against the inner tent, which could cause condensation. 
It also decreases the chances of driving rain getting onto the inner tent. Once the tent is pulled straight, peg the two adjustable peg loops at the front of the vestibule. Tighten all the peg tensioners to make the tent taut. The tent is now fully set up and ready for use, but we do recommend that you peg all guy lines as well as the sides of the tent since weather conditions can change unexpectedly. For best performance, set the onion guy lines at a 45 degree angle to the tent. For the Anyan GT, set the middle guy line straight out from the tent and the others at a 45 degree angle. When tensioning the guy lines, do not tighten the line runners so much that they deform the poles. Once you've pegged the sides and the guy lines, it's a good idea to double check that the pegs are in the ground completely and that the pole and peg tensioners and the guy lines are correctly adjusted. Setting up the Anyan GT is the same as the Anyan, except that the Anyan GT has three poles where the Anyan has only two. The Anyan GT has six guy lines where the Anyan has four, and the Anyan GT has three peg loops on each side where the Anyan has only two. Using the Anyan and Anyan GT. The red toggle at the base of the Anyan and Anyan GT's vestibule entrance zipper can be inserted into the zipper pole to lock the zipper in windy conditions. At the top of the zipper, the dedicated zipper pocket helps protect the slider from dirt and keeps it in place. The Anyan's vestibule entrance can be rolled away and secured at three different points with the elastic loop and toggle system. For basic use, roll the door to the first toggle. For more airflow, unpeg the corner of the vestibule and roll it to the second toggle. For maximum venting and views, Unpeg the other vestibule corner and roll the entire vestibule aside and secure it. Note that for these last two steps to work, you must have the front guy lines pegged out correctly. On the Anyan GT, unzip the entrance and roll the fabric towards the toggle and secure it with the elastic loop. On both models, the inner tent door can be rolled to the side and secured with its own elastic loop and toggle system. Both models' inner tents also have two pockets and a clothesline. The back wall of the outer tent can be rolled up to expose the large mesh vent on the inner tent. Unpeg the outer tent and disconnect the inner and outer tents at the back corners. Then peg the corners of the inner tent. Roll the fabric of the back wall up and tuck it over the pole sleeve. Taking down the Anyan and Anyan GT. Before taking down the tent, brush out any debris that might be in your tent. Be sure you then zip both the inner and outer tent doors closed. When taking down the tent, repeat every step you use to pitch the tent but in reverse. Set the guy lines to their longest lengths before pulling their pegs out. Similarly, set the peg tensioners to their longest before pulling the corner pegs out. In windy conditions, it's a good idea to leave one guy line attached throughout the takedown 
or to attach one guy line to a pack or other heavy object when removing the poles. To remove the poles, loosen the pole tensioners, then push one of the poles out from the end of its sleeve while holding on to the pole sleeve itself. Repeat with the remaining poles. Never pull a pole out of the pole sleeve. When folding the poles, check to see if they've been damaged. If so, replace the damaged section with the repair pole section. Put the poles and peg bag with pegs into the pole bag. Fold the tent and roll it up around the bag containing the poles and pegs. Put the bundle into the tent bag, then stow it in your pack. You can also stuff the tent into its bag. When doing this though, make sure you stow the poles separately from the tent in your pack. Never stuff the poles down the side of the tent in the tent bag. Don't ever store a wet tent. As soon as possible, hang your tent to dry. If you have the space, the ideal way is to put the poles in and hang the complete tent. If you've attached the optional footprint, make sure to partially detach it so both the tent floor and the footprint dry properly. Clean off and dry the pegs and inspect them for damage. Have a wonderful outing and enjoy the wilderness, but leave as small of an imprint as possible. Leave everything the way you would like to find it on your next trip. Visit hilleberg.com to see our entire product range and to find more videos with practical tips on using your tent. You can also read more about us, including our history, our philosophy, and how we make our tents.